there are lots of ways to tackle biomechanics and all your textbooks will have a different um, order and arrangement. What I prefer to do is start with, I suppose, the low hanging fruit, the stuff that's easiest to kind of get through. So the first couple of slides for biomechanics are projectile motion and equilibrium or balance before getting tied up with Newton's laws, uh, levers and momentum. Uh, the SAC 1, which is 50 marks uh, for unit 3, can be done entirely of skill acquisition and biomechanics in one hit, or it could be split into two parts as long as both skill learning and biomechanics are covered. Um, I actually prefer the option of dabbling into skill learning and just tackling projectile motion and equilibrium in SAC 1A for 25 marks. But check with your teacher to see what they are doing. Again, the key skills ask us to perform a qualitative analysis or movement analysis. Uh, we can either use video, we can also do it live, and then to analyze, interpret, and apply different uh, types of data. So underneath the biomechanical principles, this slide shows looking at projectile motion, and essentially it's three things, height, angle, and speed of release of a projectile. Remembering that the projectile can be a human body or javelin, shot put, football, golf ball. I'm trying to make this a, a more basic question. Essentially, it's looking at what we can do to get the best outcome when we throw a ball or a projectile. Um, if in the particular event, we're talking about the projectile as ourselves, then what can we do to maximize vertical or horizontal distance uh, as the uh, exercise may require? These guiding questions should be copied down and annotated as per an exam, um, and then use the PowerPoint and your textbooks and your peers and our learning activities to make sense of the key content, making sure you have this vocabulary to your word bank or your flashcards. So again, projectile motion is just talking about an airborne object. So the uh, body or the object, whether it's literally a physical body or a javelin or a shuttlecock or something that's not a ball, um, travels through the air. That's what we're talking about, projectile motion. So anything where an object or a body leaves the ground or the water and travels through space or air. That's looking at projectile motion. We've spoken about gravity and air resistance uh, prior to projectile motion. Uh, if you can link gravity back to its effect with uh, mass to give us weight measured in Newtons, it's a force. Um, so too is air resistance, a force opposing motion. So gravity works to oppose, I suppose, the vertical lift, whereas air resistance is typically the horizontal distance gain. So together they bring things back down to earth. They're not linked directly to projectile motion in the study design, but hopefully you can see that they are obvious uh, considerations for examiners at the end of the year and certainly in the SAC as well. The factors that are under our control and the factors that are named in the study design are speed, angle and height of release. Now in some of the texts and in the previous study design, uh, they use the term velocity of release. Let's just work with speed. It's much easier for all of us if speed is just distance over time. Um, speed of release should be pretty easy to manage. So how fast the object leaves the ground or your hand, the angle that it leaves your hand or the ground, and the height from which it's released. Pretty straightforward concept so far. Uh, the image there of basketball, I guess, is a, a point in case that we don't always try to release an object or a projectile with the intention of gaining maximum distance. Um, certainly in some really close shots up to goal, distance is the last thing you need. It's all about accuracy. And here's just a summary in text of the key features of height of release so that when the landing height is the same as the release height, and that's not always the case, something like a soccer ball when the ball's on the ground, that's fine. But for almost everything else, it's um, the ball is being released at a higher level, something, something like golf, if you're down in a, a little ditch hitting up, it's released at a lower level, so bear that in mind. But if the height of release is the same as the landing height, then 45 degrees is the optimum. When the point of release is higher, and I think that's the case for most things, if you think about javelin, shot put, discus, etc., uh, we are releasing the projectile at a higher level than the landing height, we can actually drop that angle down a little bit. So it says the optimal angle of release will be less than 45 degrees. In the case of the javelin on the slide previous, it was actually 30 degrees, which seems to me quite flat. Obviously, the aerodynamics and the drop in air resistance of that javelin help us get away with a slightly lower um, level. So when the speed of release and the angle of release remain constant, a projectile release from higher will travel further as it has a longer flight time. So all things being constant, a higher uh, release point will give a further distance for a projectile. Here's one of a number of diagrams showing you some actual numbers for optimum angle of release 
for the different projectiles. And it should be clear to see that the, the first one listed there on that upright axis is the pole vault where 90 degrees is the optimum angle. And the lowest one that's named, so this is the red lines, the dotted lines don't actually have the, um, the names, but they don't have angles on them. The lowest one there is 30 degrees for the javelin. Um, 45 degrees is listed there as a throw for distance. And in all these cases, the, uh, the height of release is on the ground. Um, so that's important to bear that in mind, the interaction between height, angle and speed of release and this notion of saying for all things being equal, um, that will have an impact on what you're going to talk about with each of those three factors. Angle of release is as simple as thinking about our little protractor here. Uh, and in most cases, we're talking about a 90 degree um, quarter of a circle, if you like. And if you can think through the examples I've listed here, there's different optimal angles of release depending on the aim um, of the sport or activity that you're taking on. So for example, a volleyball block, you want to go straight up. So the best angle of release for that is going to be 90 degrees. Anything less than that, and you're not going to be maximizing vertical distance. Um, high jump is a little bit lower, and you can find different stats and numbers on these in textbooks and elsewhere. There's a little graph coming up. Um, I don't think you need no exact numbers, although it'd be a classic little multiple choice question for an exam. But as long as you can just distinguish between would you like a higher or a lower uh, based on the nature of the task. So high jump's still relatively high, but not 90 degrees, or else you'll come straight back um, where you're taken off from um, and not land on the mat. Tennis forehand certainly going to be pretty flat, depending on, again, how high you are uh, hitting it from. So all things being equal, height and speed, angle of release will be relative to um, your aim. Are you trying to get a lob? Are you trying to get a drop shot? Are you closer to the net? Uh, and then lawn bowls, it's not exactly zero, but it's pretty close to it. Um, same as 10 pin bowling, so it might be down around five degrees. The different angles of release for different projectiles given different intentions in those sports or activities. Uh, in looking at angle of release, hopefully if you work through the two axes here, the upright axis looks at the distance, the range of the distance. Uh, so we want to get as high as we can. It looks like 10 metres is the greatest distance we've got. And then the horizontal axis talks about projectile angle. You can see a relationship there that it increases in distance up to 45 degrees before any other further increases in angle of release bring about a drop in performance. So it increases in a linear fashion up to 45 degrees before it then decreases in a linear fashion all the way down to should be 90 degrees, but it says 80 degrees there. So that's just reminding us that for all things being equal, a projectile released um, with other things constant, 45 degrees would be the optimum angle of release. In this case, it says here it's 10 meters per second from a constant height. We don't know the height. So hopefully some logic here. Um, speed of release of the three things is arguably the most important factor. Um, it will help get us the, the maximum horizontal distance that we wish. Uh, the greater the force applied, the greater will be the speed of release and the further the projectile will go. Now in lots of biomechanics and projectile motion is included, uh, we can say for all things being equal. So for all things being equal in this case, height of release and angle of release, speed um, will generate the greatest horizontal distance. And here's a table to show you some data. And while it's got speed of release on the top, and that's because the three columns on the right hand side are separated by 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second, and 30 meters per second. So they increase in speed. We also do have um, angle of release on the left hand column too. So you can make comments here about both optimum angle and also optimum speed. If you start with speed first, hopefully you can see that as the angle is constant, um, so if you look at just 10 degrees, for example, when we increase speed, we increase distance. And that's true for every other angle. So if speed increases, so too will distance traveled. If we then compare the total um, distances against the angles, and we jump straight down to 45 degrees, we know that for all other, um, for all other speeds, 45 degrees is the optimum angle for distance. And here's a graph to show you that same concept with a smaller data set, so the effect of speed on distance. So the height looks to be the same. Uh, the angle is a constant 45 degrees, which we know is optimum. So that as, we, as we increase speed of release, so too do we increase distance. The first of two bonus or extension questions refers to the long jump here. And this is essentially a data analysis. And you need to be careful here because what we've previously learned is that when you're taking off and landing at the same uh, level, the same ground level, then 45 degrees is the optimum. Yet if you look here, um, we can't actually optimize takeoff speed if we take off at 45 degrees. 
So use this uh, data set for long jump to talk about what's the optimum takeoff angle for maximum speed. And maybe just think through why isn't it 45 degrees? If you're kicking a soccer ball off the ground to land on the ground, 45 degrees would be optimum. Why isn't that the case for long jump? The second bonus question asks you to consider what advice you'd give to the softball pitcher who is consistently pitching too high or over the shoulder or ahead of the baseball batter. So think about height, think about angle, think about speed and have a strategy for each. I'm happy for you to go in at either um, age appropriate for the child or if you want to use your vocab and your VCEPE thinking, write it with all the biomechanical technical terminology that you can. You choose.